Alas, from here, I will finally tell you the winners of this year's Bestie Awards. The winner of the best video of 2023 is... Wait, what? Oh! Welcome to the sixth annual Bestie Award Show. The Bestie Award Show is a chance for us to look back before we look to the hellscape that will be 2024. There is perhaps no pride greater than winning a Bestie Award. Yes, some might say, well, what about the Grammys? Well, Eminem didn't give a crap about a Grammy. What's special about the Bestie Award, if you win, is that we don't give you something tangible, valuable, or made of actual matter. We just say it on YouTube and it disappears into the ether of the internet. This is also an opportunity for us to do something really important, and that is to make very inexpensive content during Christmas time when the revenue is at its highest. Mmm, money. All of you voted, maybe millions. It wasn't millions. And soon you're gonna find out who was the best co-host of the year. What was the most succulent meat I ate from across the world? And my favorite topic, what was the most absolute awkward moment? But first, let's rewind and take a look back at 2023 and figure out just how we got here. 2023 was a very exciting year with a lot of travel for two different channels. The second channel, more best ever food review show, really hit maturity. And not in a weird, awkward, teenage boy kind of way, in a good way. There were even times where the second channel did full series in countries all on its own. Last December, we took an epic trip to two different countries. In the same trip, Nepal and Northeast India. Nepal was fascinating. We went from the capital, then drove hours and hours to one of the highest peaks. Our Airbnb had no heat. It was miserable, but it was amazing because we could show you parts of Nepal you had never seen before. That was also where I got the mad honey that I eventually got to bring to Mr. Joe Rogan and we each had a little teaspoon. But sadly for Joe Rogan, he did not eat enough to have fake legs. Do a whole spoon? No, I'm gonna do a half spoon. Okay. You got yeah. plans tonight? Yeah, I got a show I gotta do. I can't. <laughs> have fake legs, my <laughs> legs aren't moving. In Northeast India, we went to Assam in Nagaland and we saw a part of that country most people had never seen before. A place where people eat some of the most unique, exotic, extreme meats you will find anywhere around the world. So anything goes. Yes. Dog meat. Yes. Cat. Yes, of course. After that, I went to New York City and shot some videos for the second channel. I'd only been to New York City one other time when I was 24 and I hated it because I was poor. But it turns out, to go to New York City and you're not poor, not too bad. Not too bad. In February, our team did another double country trip, first going to Mexico, then going to Peru. We had already been to Mexico City, but this time we went to the Yucatan Peninsula. It was amazing. This region boasts a huge population of Mayan people who have their own unique culinary identity. I didn't know what the animal was, and I saw everybody looking up. The dogs chased this into a tree. This is gonna be a first for me. In Peru, we put on one of our most impressive productions yet, going deep into the coastline, mountain region, and rainforest of that country. I ate street-side ceviche that made me vomit and lose multiple pounds of weight. It was pretty brutal. Imagine being in the rainforest, getting chiggers, being stung by mosquitoes, and you have diarrhea. Can I tell you what didn't help the diarrhea? We ate an armadillo, and I'm proud that I got to do that with my good friend Oro. Oro does not feel the same. When you look at it, what do you think? Are you hungry, first of all? Well, I don't see an armadillo. I'm like, oh, oh dinner. No. <laughs> After Peru, we took on yet another double country production, going to two very different places. First, Australia. Australia is the homeland of my good friend Andrew, so it was fun to get to go with him and explore parts of his country that he had never seen before. What I'm most proud of in that production is that we did six different videos featuring dozens of food and we didn't go to a single restaurant. Instead, we hunted and foraged for all of our food, except for the emu. We got that from a farm. That was pretty easy, actually. We just kind of grabbed one. Australia has some of the most unique meat and protein sources around around the world, including the kangaroo, the wallaroo, the emu, and the most difficult animal that we covered this year, the sea turtle. What is this green part? That's of um, fat. Oh. oh, dude, what? That's fat? Yeah. From Australia, we went to Laos, and I went with my good friend, Yu Vang. Yu Vang is Hmong. He grew up in Minnesota. His parents fled Laos, and this is the first time he got to see Laos in the flesh. It was an incredible adventure, and I think he even might agree. By the way, he almost died climbing up to the bat caves. The fun part is I'm gonna be right under the stream of bats as they come out. The other fun part is bats continuously. From there, my wife made me take her to Europe. So we went to Switzerland. In Switzerland, we shot some videos for the second channel. Switzerland is a beautiful country. And when it comes to food, it's 
just okay and very, very expensive. From Switzerland, we went into another main channel production, first in Ethiopia. We started in the capital of Addis Ababa, and from there, we went deep into the Omo Valley, covering some of the most unique, distinct tribes that make up the culinary melting pot that is Ethiopia. There, I tried some of the most extreme tribal food I'd ever had in Africa. As I'm looking at it, I still can see some of the food that was in the cow's stomach. Yeah, that's food of them. Of the cow. Of the cow. And now it's our food. After Ethiopia, we took a short trip to Lebanon. Lebanon's food is as vibrant as its people. Proud, loud, boisterous, and all around exciting. Also, while in Lebanon, I learned how to milk a goat. Oh my God! Wow! It's real warm. It is warm. It's 37 degrees. And a skill that I can apply to other animals. Perhaps in the future, I can milk a camel, a cow, a cat. Maybe not the last one. But after Lebanon, that is when disaster struck. Nobody really knew about this. We didn't share it publicly, but we attempted to do an epic series in Greenland. We had the whole production set up. We put months of preparation into it and thousands of my dollars. In the end, Denmark, who owns Greenland, didn't give my team visas. Yes, the same team who already has visas in the USA, the same team who's already had visas for Denmark in the past to go to the Faroe Islands. So we had to, at the last minute, scrap our Greenland shoot. It was very, very disappointing. To make up for it, I flew to the USA and I shot something I've wanted to shoot for a while, and that is a cross-country state fair food tour. And that's the tour that's wrapping up right now on YouTube. Since this was a last minute production, I had to shoot it with just me and my wife. We went from New York City to Minnesota to Washington State. We had some of the most unique, blasphemous Haram State Fair food in the world, and I loved it. This is why we stay disciplined in midsummer. So at the end of summer, we can just let it all go. While I was in the USA, I also went to Las Vegas, where we shot a four video series about Las Vegas food. And man, they got a lot of it. Have you ever seen the people that go to Las Vegas? They're big. Finally, in the fall, we shot an East Coast seafood tour. You are gonna be seeing this soon, and I'm very excited because seafood on the East Coast of the USA is unlike any other food in the USA. We've got live Maine lobster, crab, oysters, that you are gonna see how they are either farmed or plucked straight from the ocean and brought to the dinner table. So we drove all the way from Maine down to Miami and from from there, we flew to Puerto Rico, where we shot another four video series. It's got everything from iguana hunting to some of Puerto Rico's fabulous street food. So all that traveling brings us to right now. Right now I'm in Vietnam and I'm getting ready to go on another production to the Philippines here at the end of December. In just a moment, we're gonna announce the winners of the Bestie Awards for this last year. But first, I wanna say a huge thank you to my team. All this wouldn't be possible without them. There are an infinite number of ways to approach YouTube. But in 2017, I shot a TV pilot for the food network and for the travel channel and when I did that I remember walking away thinking as soon as my pilot gets canceled this is how I want to operate I want to work like a big professional production company and that's exactly what we've built from producers doing research logistics and working on the ground to shooters who are on the ground getting the best shots possible working with locals in difficult conditions to that footage finally going to a massive editing team a team that is assembling that footage cutting it into stories and mastering the audio and video from there we have specialists now working on thumbnails and other people too. This year, we started a brand new channel. Best Ever Food India is brand new and it's going great. So I appreciate everybody who's been watching and I thank you for your patience as we continue to do our best to make each successive episode better than the last. Alas, from here, I will finally tell you the winners of this year's Bestie Awards. And there is no better category to start with than the best co-host of 2023. The options are K from the Mexico tour. And then over here, we have habanero juice. Well, it's like... Habanero milk? Not milk. How do you milk a habanero? You don't so then what is this? It's... That seems like you're milking something. No. Oro from the Peru food tour. I didn't have this feeling since childbirth, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Andrew from the Australian food tour. When it gets hot, it constricts and it squeezes everything together like a sausage. It's more like a pie or something. Do you think it's more like a pie or like a round sausage? It's like a pie to me. Oh, uh, the Australians are ganging up on me. <laughs> Yu Vang from the Laos food tour. How old school is this? The Hmong word is Yua, but it's almost like a mochi. Oh my gosh. My shoulder's starting to feel it. Or Rob from the Lebanon food tour. You got a little sauce right yeah, there. Yeah, I'm sorry. That beard is a magnet for sauce. And the winner is, with 26% of the vote, narrowly getting away with it, Oro Padron. 
Andrew, you narrowly missed it, second place. Oral's from Cuba originally, he moved to Korea, I also moved to Korea, and there we lived together in the same apartment and we worked on the same company together too. So that's why Oro is like my brother from another mother, and now he's just a stereotypical Cuban-American living in Miami. On to the next one. Number two, most unique food. Peacock with the vetted tribe of Sri Lanka. This is a male peacock. I'm told they don't usually prefer to eat the male because the male is gonna be extremely tough. So we're gonna try it out, see how it tastes, and go from there. Zebra meat from South Africa. Oh, this looks insanely juicy. Oh, let's go for it. Oh, wow. Whale meat from the Faroe Islands. Oh, the smell is so unique. It's so interesting. It's a little briny. Maybe it smells like if I wear a gym shirt and then I put it on the ground and I forget to hang it up and I smell it the next day. Sorry, I'm not trying to insult your whale blubber. Kangaroo meat from Australia. Now it's time for the rooms to descend into their final resting place. Here, men who have done this many times before find the delicate balance between hot sand, cinders, and more sand, ensuring the heat is well distributed. Or sheep head in Lebanon. The majestic mound of sheep's head is adorned with toasted almond, awaiting its grand entrance at our dining table. And the winner for the most unique food of 2023 with 42% of the vote is whale meat in the Faroe Islands. What can I say about whale meat? It's slightly controversial, but I was very impressed with our audience as I always am. People were very mature about it and they were balanced in their critique of what we experienced there on the Faroe Islands. This is a part of their culture that goes back hundreds, if not thousands of years, if not millions. It's not millions. Topic number three, the scariest food. I go out there a lot and I'm not always eating Wagyu and caviar. Sometimes I'm eating stuff that's downright challenging. Let's go through them. Our nominees are fermented sheep in the Faroe Islands. That was like the most intensely fermented pungent flavor of anything I've had today. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Marinated raw yak meat in Nepal. All right, come on tasting powder, here we go. A bit rare. Badger meat in Mexico. I don't want to put too much on there first because I want to try to taste some meat as much as possible. Uh -huh. Wow. Piranha in Peru. The bones are really tiny, so you need to be very careful. If the piranha kills me, even though it's already dead, I'm going to be pissed. Just letting you know. <laughs> and dugong in Australia. By the way, the dugong, it's basically a manatee. Anyways, they said I could do it. All indigenous people who come from the northern parts that have the dugong as part of their traditions can all hunt it. But there's indigenous from the southern half of Australia where the dugong doesn't exist, technically can't hunt these because it's not part of their tradition. The winner with 29% of the vote is fermented sheep. I forgot to clap for some of them. The fermented sheep, it was good, it was bad, it was everything in between. Can I tell you something funny about that fermented sheep eating scene? Right before that scene, I broke my permanent retainer, and that is on a nation of 50,000 people. Not a lot of orthodontists to call. So what I do, I dried the tooth, I put super glue in my mouth, and that worked good enough until I got back to Vietnam. When I told that story to my orthodontist, she was horrified. Moving on to number four, best food reaction. The nominees are suckling pig filled with rice in Vietnam. Ready? Yes. Let's go for it. Mm. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Number two, Mad Honey in Nepal. You feel something different? Taste? It tastes different than regular honey, for sure. Buzz or not? Yeah, oh no. Number three, edible clay in South Africa. I don't want to be rude. Am I rude if I put the dirt back on the ground no, and I spit a little out? that's where it comes from. So oh, okay. it on the floor. <laughs> it actually has a nice texture. Number four, giant crab claws in Mexico. Mm. It's sweet, it's meaty, it's delicious, it's cold. Sometimes I don't mind having it cold. So it can bring out a different flavor mm. in the crab. Now we got to try it with the garlic. This is like my new uh, favorite food. <laughs> and number five, aloe vera in Peru. Salud. Salud. It's like Gak. Do you remember Gak? I don't remember Gak, but I remember COVID. When you try to cough and the cough didn't come, you know what I mean. And the winner for best food reaction is Mad Honey in Nepal. 
I gotta call out the guys from Yes Theory. I love those guys, but I gotta say I was inspired in a bad way because they went all the way to a mountain in Nepal and then their whole thing is like seek discomfort and then they didn't even eat the honey. Huh? Bro, that's your discomfort right there. So what I do, I ate the honey. And honestly, I wish I ate more of it. We hiked an hour to get up there. And so I didn't want to be falling down the mountain. I would prefer to walk down. So I had enough to feel something, but not enough to kill me for a day. Number five on our list, most awkward moment. Number one, Calvin's worst creation in Vietnam. I felt so confident. After the we need some. The school was definitely online. I think that might be affecting the flavor profile slightly. Are you the chef? Uh, number two, did Oro even try in Puerto Rico? Being humble, I think I have a better option. Bring it, bring it. Oh, okay, he didn't even put his on ice. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> right here. <laughs> It looks like a toy, but... Number three. No, you like bokum in South Africa. Right now, she's making a dish from bokum, one of her favorite dishes to work with. I'm not really a fan of it. Okay, well, maybe it's in her top 100. Why are you cooking it right now? Did we ask you to? Yes, you did. And I was wondering why you want to cook bokum. All right, well, we're telling a story. We just went to a place where they're drying bokum, and then we came here and you're cooking with bokum. Is that a fun connection? Not really. Number four. Sunny's childhood in India. It's got a thick skin, but it's also got a hairy mm. feeling, too. Like, like when I used to practice kissing on my arm in high school. A little bit of hair, but I tried to ignore it. Do you ever practice kissing on your arm? I, I, I prefer the real thing. Oh, yeah. not always available. Number five, snail sucking Olympics in Nepal. <laughs> okay, that was close. I almost died. More like... Mm, mm, got one. Mm. And the winner for the most awkward moment of 2023, Calvin's worst creation. Calvin is devastated that he was not nominated to be one of the best co-hosts because I think he was only on a couple episodes this year. But Calvin, here you are, being awkward as ever, still making it onto the list. Good for you, my friend. We'll send you on a windbreaker. No, we won't. We are halfway through the list and we have five remaining. Next is the most mouth-watering meat. Number one, Mayan meat suitcase in Mexico. Look at all this meat. That's a liver. That's a ham. That's a knuckle. That's a, yeah, oh, a crotch. Liver. Oh, he said liver. Sorry. I'm still working on my Spanish. Number two, grilled meat parts in South Africa. This looks incredible. I think we got it all. There's kidney, there's heart, there's liver, there's beef chunks, and then the sausage too. Would you finish this whole platter? Yeah, in a month. Number three, beef cuts in Ethiopia. Is this any certain part of the cow? Usually the round beef is really good for our tips. Oh my God, <laughs> this is like to die for. Number four, barbecue meat in Lebanon. Very delicious. And number five, black pepper crab in Sri Lanka. Here I go. I got a pretty good amount. Oh yeah, well, the flavor of that sauce is really just <laughs> seeped into the meat so perfectly. And the winner with 30% of the vote is barbecued meat in Lebanon. So a lot of places that know how to do meat, Lebanon is certainly one of them. It was fantastic. Moving on to our more serious topics, the most enlightening video of 2023. Number one, Syrian refugee camp in Lebanon. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? You know, ideally. It's beautiful because every time you ask a personal question to them, they always go back to their kids. I think that's their top priority. Uh, he said right now they don't see any future because their kids are barely barely have any education. I asked around today, the maximum they, they get to learn is uh, reading and writing and at a very uh, basic level. He said, I can't see my, my children not being educated. Now they're working in fields, picking up potatoes and, and vegetables, but I want them to learn like a proper profession, having an, an occupation that could earn them a living. And uh, all we want is to send our children abroad. And we're trying to do this every day, basically. That's their goal. Yeah. 
I love you. Number two, African lip plate tribe in Ethiopia. What is the purpose in doing so? They do the lip plates for two purposes. The first one, if the girl have a big plate, she's blessed from the God and she's ready for a marriage. So marriage cannot begin until they have the full size yes. plate, is that correct? Yeah, and the second one, to be attractive for the young man. The big plate symbolical meanings like she's most rich family girl and the more big one is the more beautiful. Number three, whaling in the Faroe Islands. I'm filming a show here on the Faroe Islands. If the Grint happened now and we showed up to film with our cameras, what do you think would happen? They would throw you away. They wouldn't be happy about that. No, they're worried about these people are bringing wrong information to the world about us. They tell we're chopping the whales up in pieces and doing these things for fun and we don't eat it and things like that. Today, with 80% of this nation's grocery products imported, it's fair to ask if it's necessary to continue whaling for food. This is food from this area. You don't have to bring your food with ships and airplanes and then polluting the air. You eat the food that belongs to your area. You understand that? I totally understand. Number four, the eight-year-old goddess of Nepal. See people, as a media, they tend to show that the Kumaris, they do not have a social life. Like they are locked inside the four walls. They cannot show their emotions. They are deprived of education and all the basic rights. I think the Kumaris now, they are really, you know, um, modern. Like in the morning, they have their duty to fulfill it as a ritual. But when she's out of that room, she can laugh, she can play. Also, she can get education if she wants to learn music, technology. Everything is brought inside her house for her. So I think it was the life of a princess. I always say that. Everyone treats you as a goddess. So they do not, you know, scold you. They kind of try to fulfill all your Even wishes. Even your parents don't scold you. No. They need to treat me as a goddess. I'm not as their daughter. And number five, the neck bulge tamils of Sri Lanka. I can't help but notice there's so many people here who have a lump on the back of their neck. What is the lump? So it's like a form of saying that the God is sitting on your back. The bigger the lump, that means you've carried it for longer. And then they keep it like that in a way to show that they're proud of what they've done. The winner for the most enlightening video of 2023 is the Syrian refugee camp. For many people, this is not a topic they would be willing to take on. But for us, I think what made it easier was that we didn't go there with any agenda. We didn't go there with a plan or any politics. We went there simply to document the lives of these people and how they live day by day. I learned a lot. The people are inspiring. The situation is heartbreaking. And I'm glad I was able to share food and experiences with these people for just a moment. Next on our list, we have best episode. The nominees are Getting Mad Honey in Nepal. You can see the honey is coming down right now. Somebody from the top is helping to suspend it. Oh, take a look. It's coming by us right now. This still has like another 50 feet to go. We've got a guy here mid-mountain helping to deflect it as it goes down. So hopefully it doesn't break. And then people down below are going to help to catch it. 24 hours with the vetted tribe in Sri Lanka. Illegal Amazon jungle meat in Peru. Oh my God. Oh, dude. Man, that's so bizarre. That is the head. Syrian refugee camp in Lebanon. This is essentially an above the ground oven. It's super hot. With each dough ball of this flat leavened bread, she pounds it out, she tosses it on the wall, lets it cook for about two or three minutes, and then that is breakfast. Very remarkable. Oh, there you go. Oh my God, that's fucking hot. <laughs> and eating sea turtle in Australia. This is by far the most unique turtle experience I've ever had. I've only had turtle maybe two other times. I swore it off because I find them to be quite adorable. But that fat is so good, I don't, wow. <laughs> I feel guilty. I like it so much. <laughs> the winner of the best video of 2023 is Syrian Refugee Camp. First of all, I want to say a huge thank you to the producer of that video, Liz. She did an excellent job of executing. Also, the local team of Lebanon were crucial to making that episode happen. And then Leon, the editor, also did some incredible work in bringing that story to life. It was a difficult story to tell, but certainly a story worth telling. At this point, we have only two remaining. And these two, they're pretty serious. Number nine, best balls. First First, sheep testicles in the Faroe Islands. See, here's what you do. You go plain ball to really appreciate the taste. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, man. Mm, that's lovely. Exactly good. Next, pig testicles in Nepal. Mm, that's tasty. Next, cheap eyeballs in Peru. You know, I have a technique to approach this. I like heart, so sure. I just look at it and imagine this is a heart. Can you see? <laughs> Let me tell you something. 
That ain't no heart. Cheers. Delicioso. Number four, sticky rice balls in Nepal. Oh, that's gorgeous. So it's kind of like cooked up on the outside. Like it's created a shell around the rice and then it's nice and steamy on the inside. This thing looks amazing. Or braised sheep testicles in Lebanon. This, I gotta say, those two testicles amounted to a lot of meat. It feels so far like everything in Lebanon is about the bread. Like in Far East and this is the rice. Right. This is tasty. Mm -hmm. And the winner for best balls of 2023, straight out of Lebanon, braised sheep testicles. Why don't I eat so many balls? And look, Liver King is wrong. I ate a lot of balls this year. I did not feel any balls here. Alas, we've come to our final category, and this one is for the second channel. A nod to more best ever food review show. And the nominees are $1,000 seafood challenge in Vietnam. This is the sashimi conch. It is on a bed of ice right now, so it stays nice and cold. And let's see. Yeah, it's really crunchy. $1,000 salt bay challenge in Turkey. Oh, here we go. Dry ice. <laughs> He's gonna take the bones out of the rib now. He gives it a little bang bang. And then he stabs it. What is the purpose? Oh, it's time for some salt. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I love the showmanship. It's incredible. $1 pizza versus $2,000 pizza in New York City. I thought those little leaflets cost like a dollar. Like one time I went to Japan and they wrapped my ice cream in gold. No, not at all. Those are expensive. Yeah, we actually go to the jewelry district here in New York and buy that from a safe. It's edible gold. It's very special. It's super expensive. $10 versus $125 food truck food in Austin, Texas. <laughs> So there are definitely some sinewy parts on the edges here. Incredible color. This has been smoking for hours. Oh, wow. The spices are incredible. It's full of juiciness. It's very tender. And Korean street food after dark. Right here, this is fried chicken skin. Not even meat. It's just the skin. It looks incredible. The winner, unexpectedly, is Korean street food after dark coming in at 39%. What can I say? I went to Korea, I went to a night market, I ate food for three hours, I filmed it with my phone, and you loved it. I, I'm, I'm humbled. So those are the winners for this year, but next I wanna talk about the plans for the future. 2024 is fast approaching, and we've got a lot in store. For the main channel, we're gonna be traveling to countries around the world we've never been to before, including a country in Europe if they give us a visa. The second channel will be doing its own country tours, specifically in countries in South America. Best Ever Food India is gonna keep expanding, pumping out content and improving quality from all over India and perhaps beyond. And beyond those three channels, we plan to start a fourth channel, a channel you will not see coming. It will be something fun and amazing, something that's gonna give your taste buds a kick in the balls. For now, I wanna say thank you for an amazing 2023. As always, I love the audience, I love the support. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time in 2024. Peace. If you love Indian food, then you're gonna love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos showcasing the most unique street food from around the country.